Hey you all, welcome back. Thank you for watching. Today's video is going to be a rundown of how I do like everyday flattering makeup what products and techniques I use for my light olive skin. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, so for an everyday look, I tend to actually do the skin first. If I'm working on a client, I always do the eyes first because nine times out of 10, I'm doing something that is smoky or sparkly or both. But I don't do that on myself on a daily basis. So I'm gonna start off with the skin. So I usually start off with a darker foundation around the perimeter of my face. If I don't have a ton of breakouts, I will use Revlon 180 Sand Beige. This one is for combination oily skin, but I also like the natural finish for dry skin. I don't think there's a huge difference between the two. But today I do have some breakouts going on, just some like hormonal stress related probably need to wash my pillowcase if I'm being honest. So I'm gonna go in with something full coverage. This is the Dermablend Flawless Creator. I think I have the shade saved in my Ulta cart, so I'm gonna just list it down below for you. I always try and list all the products I use down below anyway. So this you have to shake well before you use it. Not too, too much. This is like definitely enough, I think. And just picking up a little bit at a time. I'm starting on my cheekbone area because that's where the majority of my breakouts are right now, as well as my chin. So I'm kind of almost contouring with this, making sure to also target the areas where I'm more broken out. and then doing a little bit on my temples as well. So now I'm gonna take a few concealers. I know, I promise, it's like really quick once you get your routine down. Uh, but first I'm gonna take a pink-based concealer for under the eyes. In my olive skin foundation routine, I went over this, I'll touch on it again. We tend to have a lot of sallowness in this area, a lot of under eye darkness. So something that is a pink shade will brighten that area up. It will help to counteract the blues and the greens that are giving us that like really tired look and make sure to get in the inner corner as well. So I'm gonna let that sit and dehydrate a little bit so I get more of the pigment out of it. If you let it dry a little bit, you're gonna get more coverage. So then I'm going to use the Tarte Shape Tape Glow Wand in the shade Sunbeam. You can use like YSL Touche Clot, um, basically any like liquid glowy product. This is kind of a hybrid between a liquid highlighter and a concealer. It's lower coverage than a concealer and also not quite as glowy as a liquid highlighter. I just like to use this to kind of like highlight and conceal the tops of my cheekbones in one. Uh, so I basically don't have to use as much powder highlight. And then I like to get a glowier finish in the center of my face. So I will use this to kind of highlight without, but it's not like so glowy or sparkly or anything like that. So I'm like kind of using it as a glowy highlight, kind of. Now I'm just gonna blend that in with this random brush. I got this for free when I worked at Ulta. It's the Benefit Get Cheeky With It brush. I don't, it's not, it's clean, <laughs> okay? That's what's good about this brush is that it is currently clean. See how that just gives me like a glowy finish. I don't want glow everywhere because I'm broken out. So I just want it concentrated on the high points of my face. Now taking a smaller but still dense and synthetic brush. This is the Sephora Pro Airbrush Concealer. I'm just going to pat my concealer in. If you use longer spreading motions like that, you're gonna spread the product out. You're gonna shear it out a little bit. Uh, and if you pat, you are going to kind of keep the coverage wherever you applied the product. So I do a combination of both. Over here at the edges, I want it to blend. So I tend to do more swiping. Around the nose, I tend to do more swirling so it can really get in the creases and crevices. And then around the inner corner and right under the eye, I tend to pat so I can get the most coverage. And then I have this little 
thing right here. I get a pimple in between my eyebrows usually when I don't clean my glasses. So there's a little acne prone tip for you. I don't prime my face on a daily basis. I just do my skincare um, and just put foundation right over my sunscreen. But I do get a lot of creasing if I don't use an eye primer. So if I have an extra second, I will use an eye primer. Right now I'm using the Milani eyeshadow primer. And this one is kind of translucent. It looks like it's gonna have pigment to it, but it, it really doesn't. And it's really like thin and slippery. So what I do is I get it on my concealer brush and I start in the center of the eyelid and you can see it, it has a tiny bit of pigment, but I still have that dark redness. So then I just kind of take the concealer that is in those other areas because I applied it really liberally and I'm spreading it over the primer and kind of mixing it in with the primer. That way I'm primed and concealed on the lid, but I'm not like cakey from like a layer of each of them. You know what I mean? Voila. Now the last step for like my base, I'm gonna take a foundation that's a, a lighter than the other one, the first one that I went in with. This is the Revlon Colorstay Combination Oily Skin Foundation in 150 Buff. It's almost a perfect match. It's just a tiny bit light. So I'm gonna take like half a pump of that one and I'm just gonna hit all of the places basically between the contour and highlight zones. I talked about this in my Danessa Myrick's All of You video. I'll link that for you because I do a cream contouring demo in there. And what I'm doing now is like the same principle, just using products that are like less high contrast on my skin. So I'm using foundations and concealers in a similar way that I would contour and highlight to still get dimension on the face, but have a more subtle effect than like hardcore contouring and highlighting. Okay, and I feel sufficiently covered now. I, I like a medium to full coverage. I don't like a ton of product on my face. Like I like it to be blended and everything. If you watch Tati Westbrook, she wears too much makeup for me. Like that is an example of makeup that like looks really good, but is still a lot for every day. So I definitely wear less makeup than someone like her, but I wear more makeup, more base makeup than someone like Hannah Louise Poston or Samantha Ravindahl. Like I definitely am like less natural than them too, but like more natural or less product than someone like Tati. Okay, now I'm gonna take a big old brush and do my bronzer. This is the Spectrum Collection. A01, you could just take like any powder brush. Okay, I like can't find my bronzer for, I think I like misplaced it between like filming and whatever. So I'm just gonna take a loose powder. This is Bobbi Brown Basic Brown, uh, the one on the bottom here. I think warm natural is a little bit too warm and a little bit too light. Let's hope this works. I'm just gonna take that on like this little paint palette that I got at Dollar Tree. I use these when I'm doing makeup. <laughs> and since it's such a big brush and it's a loose powder, I'm trying to get like the like tips of the bristles like evenly coated. This would probably be easier actually if I poured the powder into a tissue. And I'm just bronzing up my temples with that. Using a bigger, fluffier brush is going to give you more of a soft application, more of a soft focus effect, whereas using smaller brushes or brushes with more densely packed bristles is going to give you a heavier application, uh, a less diffused application, which can be good when you're trying to get more definition, but this is like 10 minute makeup, you know? I actually really like the way that looks as a bronzer on my skin. Yeah, so this is meant to be a setting powder. I would use this on dark skin, probably not deep skin, uh, but on me, like really diffused, it looks really nice. Uh, and it's not a foundation powder, it's just a setting powder. So these are gonna be more sheer. So there's a tip for you. If you can't find a bronzer color that works for you, 
Try just going for a tinted face powder that's a few shades too dark for you. This is the MAC Mineralize Blush in Humor Me. Great everyday blush for so many skin tones, not just light olive. And because it's such a soft color, I'm using a denser brush to apply it. Even if I didn't have this brush, it would be fine. I'd just have to build it up for like a few more seconds. But I have this brush clean, so this is the Bobbi Brown Blush Brush and I'm just gonna smile. And actually what I like about this brush is like, it's the shape of a cheek. So it makes it really easy to apply blush, at least where I like to apply it, which is like all over. But typically I'll take like a natural blush, something that doesn't stand out as much, something that's not as bright, and just kind of put it all over the cheekbones. And even though I'm smiling, I'm still hitting like the tops here because when you stop smiling, it goes down. So you don't want to create like a sunken look. So just be careful and make sure you put it kind of high up. And then I brush the rest kind of across, blend it into the bronzer. I feel like on camera it's coming off like way more dramatic than in person. I apologize, I'm not like a lighting expert. Then I take a bright blush. This product is, it was limited edition, but just the point is that it has a bright blush in here. So I'm just gonna tap my brush in there because I'm kind of pale and I'm gonna smile. And while I put the more natural blush kind of all over here, this I'm just gonna put on the apples. And whew, gosh, that is really bright. It's by Colored Rain, which like are super pigmented products. So what I'm gonna do is just take my foundation brush and just tap over the edges because I just want a little bit of brightness right in here. See how much better this side looks now than that side? Okay, uh, HD tends to take red and just make it really present. So, sorry. <laughs> All right, now I'm just gonna take what's left of the powder that I used as my bronzer. And this is a Bobbi Brown Eye Sweep Brush. You can use a rounded crease brush, whatever. Doesn't really matter. Just tap out any creasing. And I'm just going to kind of hug my eye crease with that. Now with the same brush, you can take a matte eyeshadow, you can take your face powder, you can take a shimmer. I could take the highlight in this palette, just something that's kind of close to your skin tone. The lighter it is or the darker it is, the more drama you're gonna get. And I'm going for something like pretty effortless. So I'm taking Wet n Wild Single in Brulee and I'm using the same brush because it has a flat side and I'm just picking that up. and I'm patting that all over the lid, working in a dome shape, because that's gonna make your eyes look bright and awake. And in general, just like sweeping a bronzer into the crease and then uh, a matte color all over the lid is going to give you long lasting wear and prevent uh, creasing on the eye as well. And I make sure to get into the inner corner as well with that uh, like brightening shade. Now, sometimes I use for my brows the LA Girl Brow Bestie in Black Brown, and then sometimes I use the Anastasia Brow Powder Duo. This is Ash Brown. Ash Brown or Granite both tend to work for me. I'm gonna use the powder today just because I haven't used it in a while. And I have kind of like difficult brows to do, honestly, like, they're not the worst, but it can be tricky to like make them look natural. So what I do is I just avoid the inner portion to begin with and I start with the outer portion. So I just like on the bottom of the tail, I'm applying powder with my angled brush and then I brush that up. But as I'm brushing, I don't brush outside of the border of my natural brows. So I'm doing like little brushes. Then I'll define the arch a little bit. Then without picking up more product, 
I'll just draw a little line right here. Kind of push that up with my spoolie. I'm turning the brush to hold it vertically. I'm holding it basically so it's facing the same way as my brow hairs wherever I'm drawing. I just flick it up like this and like I just think that looks like almost like it could be real. I have a lot of contrast because on the soft versus clear spectrum my skin is very clear or my complexion is clear I should say my overall coloring is clear I have like light skin and dark hair so I like need a little bit of depth and brightness on my face to look alive I will eventually do a video on clear versus soft because I think that that is like a really important piece that's missing in a lot of people's knowledge of color theory. I like the way slightly darker brows look on me even if I'm going for a natural look. Same thing with a slightly brighter blush. Not everybody feels that way and usually if you don't feel that way it's probably because you have a softer skin tone than I do. I actually usually take a liquid liner next but again I don't know where mine went. So I'm gonna take a black pencil liner. This one is from Lancome. And my eye shape, it just, I need more eyeliner in the um, inner corner than like most people do. So I actually like to start there. Also because I part my hair in the center these days, um, it can make my face look wider if I have the concentration of my eyeliner on the outside so like if I do a wing for example without having like liner or lashes closer to my nose it makes my face look wider than I want it to look it makes my nose look wider than I want it to look uh, so your eyeliner matters for like the your overall face shape actually And I could blend this out and make it smoky, um, but that takes time and I need a lot of definition, right? Like I don't always look so good with like those soft smoky textures. So I'm just gonna keep it crisp. And again, I would normally use a liquid liner for this. I just don't know where mine is. Okay, it's not perfect, but you're not gonna get as crisp a line with a pencil liner, but actually I think this one by Lancome got a pretty dark, crisp line there. I'm actually not mad. All right, curling my lashes for me is a necessary step, even when I'm doing everyday makeup, because my lashes stick straight down and it makes me look pretty tired, honestly, when I put mascara on them uh, when they're not lifted. So I need to use a lash curler and then I need to use a waterproof mascara. If you didn't know, waterproof mascara holds a curl better than not waterproof mascara because uh, this is oil-based. So it's almost, it's, it's kind of almost like hairspray. It's not hairspray, but like same concept, you know what I mean? If you have lighter eyes, and or a softer skin tone than I do, you can experiment with brown mascaras. My eye color isn't particularly dark. They're a pretty true hazel, but I need a lot of definition. High contrast looks better on me. So I like to use a very dark black mascara. This is the L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Paradise Waterproof in blackest black. However, even if you have a soft skin tone, but your eye color is like a very dark brown, let's say, that's actually kind of more common with like medium olive skin tones, I would say, uh, you still need a black because your eyeliner and mascara should be darker than the color of your iris if you don't wanna look tired. Okay, and for every day, I don't put anything on the bottom. Not my thing. And then sometimes I'll take like a mauve kind of lipstick or lip gloss, but for today I'm just gonna do like a gloss balm type thing. This is the Patchology Lip Service 
uh, Glostebalm treatment. And this is minty, so it has like a plumping effect. Tastes really nice. I do find that lip colors can be a little bit challenging for olive skin, especially like if you want them to look natural. So honestly, there's like nothing wrong with just wearing a clear gloss or balm. So this is it. Um, it's not like the most extravagant look. It's not the most mature look. It's not the most feminine look. It's not the most butch look. It's just kind of like a look. It's just kind of a bunch of like flattering products and techniques that I throw on my face in 10 minutes when I just want to look and feel put together. So that is it for this look you all. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss any of my future uploads and I hope to see you very soon. Bye!